Is it true Vince Russo was a dick to you during your Santa Claus run? All right, now this is where that comes from, okay? The Santa Claus gimmick, you know, Vince had, Vince had wanted to do that for a long time, apparently. You know, Jim contacted me about that. And, uh, oh God, I see that question, that'll be good. Um, <laughs> You know, I did the gimmick that night, and I got a couple rides to the next venue because my girl, I didn't have a car at the time. And uh, I didn't know, you know, I was waiting to find out what was going to happen. You know, I, my travel, I, you know, I'm like, when am I going to get travel info? Oh, don't worry, you know, we'll contact you during the week. I'm okay. And I kind of figured, you know, all right, maybe this is over. We'll, you know, we'll find out. So they contacted me a couple days before Christmas. You know, the gimmick's not working out, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, I'm like, so where does that leave us? Go, well, we don't want to get rid of you. We just want you to go on the back burner for a while. Now, I was one of the first ones they were going to do this with. So I didn't understand at the time what they were saying, that they wanted me in the gym. They wanted me to work out, get ring time wherever I could, and just keep, you know, keep not wrestling. Where I thought I had to wrestle a match. I got to get paid. I got to wrestle. You know what I'm saying? So I decided, I'm like, well, get my pay-per-view money, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they're like, well, that might take three or, three or four months. I'm like, how the hell do I have to wait that long for my money? I didn't know, that, you know, how it would work. So I was like, well, what about wrestling? When can I wrestle? Well, you can get booked through the company, and you can go wrestle then. I'm like, okay, well, can I use my other characters? No, you'd have to. I go, so basically you're telling me you're going to pay me to go to the gym, lift weights, and all that. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, no. Nah. I go, that's not going to happen, dude. I'm going to get a paycheck if I have nothing to, nothing to get ready for each week. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be 400-something pounds and fat. You know, I don't, don't want to do that. I go, I got to wrestle. I don't think I'm going to learn anything by going to a wrestling school working on the same things. You know, I want to work. And they're like, well, I'm, so we did a mutual contract release. And because they said, well, we're going to get another character for you. It might take a year. It might take two. And this is Russo you're talking to? No, this is actually James J. Dillon. Okay. okay. This is where the heat with Vince Russo came from. And I spent, again, I talked to Vince Russo and I did TNA, shook his hands. He was, for a promo, he was one there. We're fine. It was, you know, take a, it was a young guy. It was stupid. So I did the mutual contract release. I get my paycheck. You know, I'm all happy. I get a call from Cornette. The fuck is wrong with you, man? We got a hell of a gimmick set for you. What the hell did you quit for? You know that's gonna fuck you? And he goes, besides, you see the torch? And I'm like, what? What do you mean? Oh, man, but, well, it got out in the torch that I was drunk, drinking in the locker room, which wasn't true. It was just out the night before. I was hung over. I stank like whiskey. And apparently the torch supposedly I, I, I started calling around to find out well, where that came from. Mm -hmm. Came from Vince Russo's office. So I get on the phone. I'm like, I want to talk to Vince Russo right fucking now. Put Vince Russo on. Well, who is this? And I told him who it was. So they go, hold on. So I'm on hold for 10 minutes. And I'm just getting more and more steam. And I hear Vince, you stupid motherfucker. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you to tell people what I'm doing? You're not supposed to tell people what's going on in the locker room. You know I wasn't drinking the fuck. Fuck you, you prick. I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to rape your fucking sister. All this shit. So what, you know, what the, it goes, you understand that this is uh, Vince McMahon, right? And I'm like, no. Fucking dick got me. Wrong Vince? Uh, well, he played a rib on me. Oh, yeah, well, yeah he put, he put uh, a rib. Oh, they played a rib okay. on me. Okay. So, but you know what? If I never did that, though, I never would have got Balls Mahoney because that's where the name came from. You got to remember, here I am in 1995, and I just told, you know, now, even then, I just told, however inadvertent it was, the number one guy in wrestling, hey, Go shove your dick up your ass. I'm going to fuck your sister or rape your mother. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Salvatore you know, M., would you swear on the life of your son that the video project you did with another company where you faced off with New Jack was total 100% shoot? I mean, it really did seem too pro-wrestling-y for it to be real at times, in my honest opinion. Look, me and New Jack had a lot of heat, okay? I'm... I, I'm not going to even really address much more of the New Jack thing. Me and he, when we had that thing in the locker room, we had, I talked it out. I did not expect that to happen. If it the fight, the fight. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't. I dude, I thought where our heat was done and over with, and then that happened. You know what? I don't care. Ever ever since 
me and Jack, I've talked to him. You know, he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. Whatever. Okay, but no. Because the first confrontation that we had after that all started, I was so mad and so worried about things that I actually had a gun on me. I did. I had a gun on me. And I figured if this guy does something, I'm going to fucking shoot him. You know, and when my better half found out, because when she had gotten pregnant, you know, I had a collection of weaponry that I got rid of, you know. Mm -hmm. She flipped on me. She goes, it's not worth it, you know. And we, and I thought it was over. You know what? It's, it, it's done. It's over. I got I think most of the work, most workers always have a little bit of work in them. Mm -hmm. Even when something's a shoot, it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's mm -hmm. tough to, to draw that line between work and shoot yeah. anyway. Jason Bradbury, Washingtonville, New York. After watching a face-off produced by another company, I was wondering if you and New Jack had patched things up. There you go. You're back on well, speaking yeah, terms. Well, you know you, what? Do you if talk I see, at all? I, I spoke to him after the hurricane because he was living in Newark. And I heard that he lost everything, you know, that his house got hit hard during Sandy. You gotta remember, I, you know, where I live is, was grounds. We didn't have power for 16, 17 days. I was fine with it, you know, I had a grill going. I mean, a couple of years ago at the gathering, I was walking around for two days in shorts, no shirt, no shoes, for two days, just in my element, just going nuts. So basically it was like that, except it was cold. So I was building fires and stuff. I'm a survivor. Like I could do like survivor man and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I could live if, if I'm like, if say all of us were straight, like say we're all on a trip somewhere. Okay. And it goes down. Let's see. Damien Darling would be a meal. He would last. He would last. You'd last a little while, but you would be a meal Same and you would evil. be. Oh, I'd kill you in a heartbeat. Yeah, I think the fat guys would get together because we could. All we need is we would be able to survive a lot longer. We had the fat. You know, I got a lot of fat. I still. predict a different outcome. You're a shark hunter, and you guys would have eaten fish. Oh yeah.